course, we'll be transplanting these as soon as they get a couple of uh, real leaves, other than those first uh, couple of leaves that come out on a seed. But uh, anyway, here we have a tomato that was raised in this season and dried the seed. Uh, you can see it on this paper. Cut 10 of them off, dampened it in a baggie overnight, planted them the next day. And uh, so these only had like two days of drying time from the tomato that I ate. And then uh, it produced these nine tomato plants coming up right here, little seedlings. Yeah, they're really tender. And uh, anybody that knows anything about gardening, uh, uh, you can lose some even after they get to this stage just by not watering correctly or having something uh, fall on them or who knows what. But anyway, I just brought it out here in the ride so you could enjoy this uh, little bit of rain we're getting. It's such a nice reprieve. And uh, I found uh, a few tobacco hornworms. Uh, Grasshopper's been uh, munching on the uh, monkey grass alongside both edges of the driveway. So I had to spray again with Theracide and the, the BT does an excellent job. Uh, found several uh, dead uh, tobacco hornworms and then I caught, um, I think it was actually somebody else that was here, uh, noticed a, uh, a fruit worm which is normally uh, something that bores into uh, corn husk, down, goes down the silk and gets inside the, uh, the uh, cob of the corn and eats, eats, uh, eats it up. Well, uh, anyway, found one of those. So that's the second one of those. One of them was inside of a tomato plant. Once they get inside of an ear of corn, they say the pesticide is pretty well useless and you've lost, you've lost that uh, crop, possibly the entire crop to, uh, to this particular fruit, fruit worm. And uh, yeah, kids love caterpillars, but I kind of detest them. <laughs> well, this is a long enough video. Uh, just wanted to kind of give you an update. And uh, thank you for all that uh, take time to come and look and listen. Uh, had uh, just a tiny bit of a problem with uh, uh, my bell peppers. I've got two two bell peppers and one jalapeno. And uh, the bell peppers were all getting blossom end rot, uh, much like a tomato uh, can. And I've had that happen more when I plant in a soil situation like this uh, than I have with the Dutch buckets. I, I have one Rutgers plant that produced a, uh, a tomato with blossom end rot. Um, and uh, it appears to be some calcium deficiency. So uh, the other day while I was gone, my wife uh, opened the buckets on the two bell pepper and stirred uh, about three tablespoons of dolomite, which is a calcium rich uh, uh, product for uh, agriculture. And uh, she just stirred it into the uh, top inch of, uh, of the uh, perlite inside the bucket and then wetted it down and then replaced the lid. So we're hoping that takes care of it. And I picked some uh, bell peppers today. A couple of them had blossom end rot. The other two that appeared a little newer, no blossom end rot. So I'm, uh, I'm hoping we caught that and that will help. And then uh, really considering uh, uh, using a little calcium carbonate or the, uh, the uh, um, dolomite, which is uh, rich in calcium. Considering using some of that on uh, in the uh, nutrients that I'm feeding this system. So anyway, uh, I did call uh, uh, the uh, folks at Morgan County Seeds where I bought my Master Blend Tomato Special Formula. And uh, he was uh, he was a 20 year veteran of uh, uh, soil and uh, horticulture. Uh, but he says, I really don't have any real experience in hydroponics. And, and he said, uh, there are a lot of things that can block the uptake of calcium uh, in, uh, in plants and uh, he just rattled off a whole bunch of things. Seems like just about everything blocks, uh, blocks the uh, calcium, uh, nitrogen, potassium, different things. Uh, this is the first thing I did. I had, uh, I had some, uh, first time I've dropped uh, any tomato vines before, but it actually worked pretty well. This is a super sweet 100. Uh, the two before's here are 10 foot long and the bar going across or the two to six are, uh, are uh, <coughs> about nine feet high and as you can see this thing is just loaded down with one inch diameter tomatoes 
and uh, I ran out of room. It needed, needed to go on up, so I just uh, simply unhooked the string off the nail up there and tied on another section. And by letting them both down at the same time and hooking them back on the nail, I had no problem uh, causing this to, to droop. And you can see it comes right out of the bucket, kind of droops around to the side, and still within the footprint of the frame uh, that we have erected here. And uh, this is 14 feet long, it's a 14 foot 2 by 12 treated, and uh, two before going up are also treated. I do have a cross beam, which is 2 by 6. The back one is drooping a little bit. Right here, uh, I did put in a brace, so I want to show that to you right here. This is a two two before's in an A-frame. And then it, the A-frame has a crossbar going underneath it, which supports uh, supports the uh, plank that goes across. I put some little stiff legs underneath the plank in the middle, so at about, uh, about whatever the center is on that. And then I added a brace. So notice this brace goes this direction. The other brace, a few feet away, goes the opposite direction. So if you put those two together, you would you'd say, well, that's a V, and, uh, but if you put them a little closer mentally, it's actually an X. So uh, in, in uh, engineering, you have, let's say the wind, let's say the wind was blowing this way, this board would be in uh, compression, and that board right over there would be in tension. So it'd be pushing that way, it'd be pulling on this board, but when the wind is blowing this way, it's pushing on this one. So in, in essence, you get two different types of uh, support from uh, this type of setup. And it's basically a, an A-frame with an X on it. And the little uh, facts that, that it's supporting in the middle, just this makes it pretty darn strong. And I'm thinking about uh, maybe adding a stiffener board to the tops of these, maybe. Not this year, but maybe next. And just to kind of make things a little, little stouter, uh, but I don't think we'll have any problem uh, dropping these strings down. I'm using a number 24 nylon twine, and uh, I like it pretty good. I, I like the looks of the clips that when people use the uh, baling twine, I like the looks of the clips. But I just have been uh, twirling the vine right around here. Occasionally, out of uh, 24 vines, I think I snapped the top out of uh, two different uh, tops. Um, but if you stop and think about it, uh, I've really got two plants coming out here since this one's suckered. And, and uh, it's interesting that some of the some of the uh, tomatoes that bear the most are actually the shortest. <laughs> so that kind of there's a correlation there between. Uh, make putting on a lot of fruit, like this particular plant right here. And I believe this one is a celebrity. And it was grown in a rock wall cube and started with, with uh, a sucker itself. Uh, but anyway, I'm doing a few things like uh, right here. This is, just a, this is just a cup full of water. And I've been throwing my suckers in there and just ignoring the heck out of them, except to make sure they have the water. And then as soon as they root, well, I'll give them a couple another cup and a little potting soil and I've got plants all over now and as you can imagine but uh, for those of you who uh, drop those suckers to the ground it's just as easy to create a new plant there would be no reason to do so if you didn't have a greenhouse so you know what I'm thinking now and uh, but anyway thanks a lot for watching and as you can see I've got a lot of green fruit I uh, hope it can handle these uh, high temperatures I'm considering putting some type of uh, shade or covering to partially block uh, excess uh, heat from the sun and I'm already having problems over here with this one but uh, maybe I can get a, another tub and slide under that or something to keep that from going, going south on me but I uh, sure am tickled I can't wait to try one of these uh, golden girl yellow tomatoes there's a wad right there and uh, just a few here and there so you can see but uh, thank you so much for watching, and uh, this was long enough. Hope you're having uh, a good summer, and uh, uh, your garden is doing well. And I guess I'll sign off for now. It's a quiet woods, too, here in the middle of Arkansas on a rain, rainy evening.
see you later.